I vividly remember those wonderful days I spent at home, waking up to a beautiful morning in the garden and getting ready for school, eagerly awaiting to tell my teacher and classmates about how I won at the evening games. Well, they call it a hostel, but to me it was home. Oh yes, and by the way, I am a person with speech and hearing impairment. I believe my parents abandoned me in a railway compartment when they came to know that I could neither hear nor speak. A police inspector found me and brought me here. This place has made a woman out of me and taught me to live with dignity. Yes, ours is a hidden disability which hinders our speech and language development, isolating us from the rest of the world. Here, our method of learning was different. A lot of emphasis was placed on language development. A multi-sensory approach was used. Our lovely teacher began the day by conversing with us. Some parents too sat by their children and helped them. That's when it struck me that I actually had no one to sit beside me. Finding me brooding alone, our darling principal Lata ma'am would often talk to me to make me feel at home. As days passed and I learned to express myself, the initial feeling of emptiness and loneliness slowly gave way into a deep sense of belonging. Our teachers did all they could to help me communicate. They got done, tailor made ear molds for fitting the hearing aids. And so, when the teacher spoke into a mic that always hung around her neck, I could hear some faint sounds. I was then taught to lip read and speak. Gradually, I began to speak. Occasionally, we had experts come and conduct an audiometry test where they would give us a sound and we would respond. This way they could monitor how much I could hear. Slowly I began to learn the language through visuals, reading and writing. I enjoyed the food they served us. I grew up into a confident teenager, quite at peace with myself. Until the lessons got tougher. I couldn't concentrate anymore. It was beyond me to understand and study advanced mathematics. The days got lonely and I began to get frustrated. One day, my teacher could take it no more and reported about me to Lata ma'am. When I was asked what the problem was, I told her blatantly, I am not interested in studying further. So. What do you want to do? She asked. I can cook. I can make bags. I said enthusiastically. To my surprise, she gave in. Life became peaceful once again. 
I started cooking and baking for others. I also began making jute bags. Evenings would be fun time in the hostel. I had many friends, some of whom studied very well. Years flew by. All of a sudden, things fell into place and before long, my marriage was conducted in the same campus which was my home for almost two decades. Today, I make jute bags and also some eatables and pickles and sell them. With around 300 children, 30 teaching faculty and around 15 support staff, the MGR Home and Higher Secondary School for Hearing Impaired, the dream of Bharat Ratna Dr. M. G. Ramachandran, is recognized by the State Commissioner for the Differently Abled, Government of Tamil Nadu. Not all teachers can come and teach children with hearing impairment, so they need specialized training to teach them, for which we provide in-house BA training program. ஜெயலலிதாங்க <laughs> The earlier they come, uh, their speech and language improves a lot and they are able to grow up and merge into society very well. We um, ensure that all our students gain confidence. We give them a lot of opportunities to win, which will help them gain confidence to face life. So what if I can't speak your language? A different language is just a different vision of life. Each one of us has a special quality waiting to be discovered.